Do you ever look at something and wonder, can I sublimate it? Would it take the ink? Okay, that might just be me, but let's be honest. Sublimation has become a crafting phenomenon these days. Everybody wants to sublimate just about everything. And I got to thinking, could I sublimate a 3D print? The turns out the answer is yes. And I'm gonna show you how today. Hey everybody and welcome to Labcraft Studio. I'm here in my studio and today we're gonna play around a little bit with 3D printing and sublimation. Now these are two crafting slash fabrication options that have been around for quite a while now. But sublimation has recently taken the crafting world by storm. You've probably seen tumblers out the wazoo listed on Amazon and Etsy, or one of your friends might've made you a shirt. But I'm always kind of interested in what can I do differently? What could I maybe sublimate that most people haven't? Now I've had a 3D printer for a while and I've made some cute little stuff, including things like, you know, a miniature Cthulhu, to bookmarks, this fantastic model of a city within a moon. Seriously, kudos to the artist on this one. It was totally worth the 24 hour print job. The one downside about 3D printing is the only way to really get prints colorful, and by colorful I mean multiple colors, is typically usually to paint them afterwards. You can sometimes play around with changing the filaments out, and I have done that with some neat effects but I kind of wondered if it was possible to sublimate, transfer sublimation dye using heat onto a 3D printed product. Now you might wonder why would you want to do that? Because I can? No, seriously. 3D printing is usually thought of with, you know, 3D objects, but you can also do flatter objects and being able to, you know, apply designs to this would prove to be super useful. For instance, these bookmarks are really cool, but they'd look even cooler with, you know, text or a, you know, pretty colorful design rather than just being the plain white that they are. So how do we go about sublimating on 3D filament? Well, first of all, you need to make sure you're using the right 3D filament. So here's the kicker with sublimation. In order to transfer the dye, of a sublimated design, which is typically printed out in a printer, you need to use two things, pressure and heat. Now, the heat required for sublimation typically is anywhere between 350 and 400 degrees, depending on the material, and then for a certain length of time, and you usually need to apply, you know, medium to firm pressure, depending on what you're printing. 350 degrees to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. That's pretty hot. In fact, so hot that it would melt certain filaments. The most commonly used filament for 3D printing is PLA. Typically, this has a print melting point of about 210 to 220 Celsius. Now, while that seems like it would be okay, a lot of the times it seems to, with the application of pressure, and that amount of heat is unfortunately enough to usually melt the material. And trust me, I've tried it. Do you know how hard it is to scrape plastic off a heat press? So in order to sublimate on 3D filament, we need a filament that's a little more heat resistant. Enter our friend PETG. PETG is a filament that definitely requires a higher print temp. In fact, for this one, which is the one I use, it has a nozzle temp of 230 to 250 degrees Celsius. So we're already way shooting over than what we need for sublimation. It can be a little finicky, but for the most part, it's just a matter of adjusting your print settings. And it can create some nice sturdy heat resistant prints. I messed around and made a bunch of these little bookmarks that we are going to try and sublimate today. Now I've done a little bit of experimenting ahead of time, and I happen to have kind of acquired the settings that work for this. The biggest issue I found is that while applying a certain amount of heat seems to be effective for transferring the design, the biggest issue is trying to modify the amount of pressure that you're applying. You want enough that the design will bond, but not enough that you can potentially flatten the print. For instance, this was one of my tests that I would call a success. 
You'll notice the design transferred pretty well, maybe a little bit light in places, but for the most part a good transfer. But I noticed on the edges it seemed like it was blowing out a little bit. In some examples where I had applied even more pressure or longer time, it was definitely worse. So the trick is how to get the sublimation print onto a 3D printed object without compromising the structure and shape. Enter in an alternative to a giant t-shirt press. Ta -da! It's a baby iron. In all seriousness, this is the Cricut mini press. It's a really good little tool. Um, I found that the it only admittedly doesn't allow you precise control of temperature settings. You get three little lines that determine your temperature and it goes from there. But another alternative that we can use is, a pre is an actual Cricut heat press, which I may opt to get out and try as well later. So that being said, let's get started. So I'm using this picture of Cthulhu in a cyberpunk library that I generated on Midjourney for my design. I attached it using heat transfer tape to the sublimated paper and then I flip it over onto a um, just a piece of scrap paper because you always want to sublimate with the sublimation paper on top. So the first time I attempted to sublimate I used the small iron but I found that some of the edges didn't completely sublimate. I think just because it was so close in size it just wasn't big enough to cover it completely. So I'm going to try again, this time using my Cricut Easy Press. And given the size of my Easy Press, I can sublimate two bookmarks at one time. It's always important to sublimate on a piece of scrap paper because you will get some blowout from the design. So here I'm just using um, actually a, the back of a scrap piece of sublimation paper. And then it's really just a matter of taking the heat press and gently applying it to the 3D prints. I have mine set at 380 for 30 seconds and I am just very lightly pressing, not using much force at all. And then once it's done, I simply take it off, put it back, and then I use this big ceramic tile that I found at a hardware store nearby to just kind of press on top of the prints. I also do this when I'm sublimating acrylic. It just helps keep the prints flat and make sure they don't go anywhere while they're cooling. And ceramic, of course, is excellent for um, absorbing heat. After that, it's a matter of just removing the sublimation paper from the 3D print. Um, uh, fortunately, this does stick to the 3D print pretty well, but it, there's an easy fix for that. You simply um, soak it in some water and then just give kind of a light scrub and then you, before you know it, it's completely done. And there you have it, folks. Sublimated 3D printed bookmark, complete with a very cool Cthulhu design. So I will say some caveats with this. I definitely think if you're going to sublimate on 3D printed objects, you're best off doing it with flat things, as well as sublimating in a way that you can really control the pressure so that you can be as light as possible while still being able to apply the ink. I personally would recommend using a hand pressed heat press like either the Cricut heat press or even like the Cricut mini heat press. But as you can see, you can get some pretty cool vivid designs. The alternative that you could possibly try and I might try in the future is applying the design to um, heat transfer vinyl and putting that design on your 3D print. So I'll have to try that in the future and see if it sticks. Thanks for watching my video. Hope this helped add some cool tools to your crafting collection and I'll see you next time. Bye.